The Abbott and Costello program. <laughs> time you got here, Costello. This is going to be a big night on our program. I've invited Rudy Valley to be our guest. Rudy Valley? Yep. But his program follows our program. You mean to tell me he's going to be on our program and then sing for a half hour on his own program? What's wrong that with... That means he'll be on the air for a whole hour. What's wrong with that? His nose is going to be awfully tired. Ah, no, 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 Costello. Uh, Rudy Valley does not sing through his nose. That's false. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. How'd you know he had a false nose? <laughs> he hasn't got a false nose. It's, it's the rumor that's false. The rumor is false? Certainly. And why does he take in that kind of rumor? No, no, he doesn't take... He doesn't take in rumors, Lou. Some people say that Rudy Valley sings through his nose, and I found out it was a false rumor. Oh, you mean Rudy's a ventriloquist. No, no, he's not a ventriloquist. Then why has he got a rumor singing through his nose? Uh, tell us, there's, a, there's no rumor singing through his nose. When I say rumor, I don't mean a rumor like a border. The kind of rumor I mean is uh, spreading false tales. The rumor is spreading a false tale? That's right. That I gotta see. <laughs> see what? I'd like to see Valley singing through his false nose while his rumor sits there wagging his false tail. <laughs> Look, Costello, for the last time I'm trying to tell you there's a false tail on Valley's nose. Oh, now he's got a tail on his nose. Costello, please. Who's he rooming with? Mickey Mouse? Nah. Will you stop talking like an idiot? Look, Adam, tell me what thing. Rudy valley has got a nose, hasn't he? Yes. And he sings through his nose, don't he? No, that's a rumor. Does the rumor sing? No. Then what is he doing in his nose? The, the rumor is not in his nose. The rumor is on his nose. Where some people won't go to find a place to live. <laughs> quiet, quiet. Hey, quiet, Costello. Now, that may be Rudy Valley now. Uh, come in. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. I am Professor Melonhead. Melonhead, eh? And you look it, too. <laughs> Yeah, but kept this guy on a skull and see if he's right. Ah, yeah. Costello, behave yourself. Uh, what can we do for you, uh, Professor? Well, I, sir, am Mr. Rudy Valley's cultured advisor. Yes, sir, it is my duty to investigate the mentality of those with whom Mr. Valley comes in contact. <laughs> you see, Mr. Valley only associates with eyebrows. Eyebrows? Yes. I can see that. Your brow runs all the way back to the back of your neck. Yes. That is that beautiful head of skin. All right, all right. <laughs> please, Who Costello. tightens it for you? Costello, please. Uh, I just say who shines it. Never mind that. Please. It's a lovely polish. All right, all right. The man is bald. That's not his fault. Just uh, what do you bald. have in mind? Yes. Not only bald, but bold. All right, bald. All right. Uh, He's what a bold, bald. Yes, yes. Something professor. else. He's a professor. Yes. <laughs> By the way, what do what do you have in mind, Professor uh, Melonhead? I have come here expecting to improve Mr. Lucas Devil's Dixon so that he will be fit to converse with Mr. Valley. Now, you, sir, I know you're Mr. Bud Abbott, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, if you know him, then you should know me. Oh, of course I know Thank you. Me. I never forget a. Hey. What is that thing? Oh, a face, of course. You see, my dear boy, you are proof positive of the Darwinian theory of evolution. And I'll prove it to you. First in evolution came what? The primeval ooze, then the amoeba, then the ape, chimpanzee, orangutan, gorilla, then the pit, canthropus, erectus, the neanderthal man, the java man, the field magnet man, the missing link, then you, and then the human race. <laughs> Abbott, 
I am about to plug a melon. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, I'm afraid that Costello resents your remarks. He's right. Abbott is absolutely right. I resemble those remarks. <laughs> <laughs> resemble? My, my. What English? What English? And you expect to entertain Mr. Valley, a man of infinite culture, the antithesis of everything you misrepresent to resemble? <laughs> the moment I use polysyllabic conversation, Mr. Costello, you commit a faux pas. Why do you attempt intelligent rape party in the extemporaneous manner when your intelligence quotient is minus nil, sir? Why don't you admit to the... Why don't you admit to the status of a non compass mentis non-entity? That's a lie! <laughs> I've never seen with the back room door on the, without unless it's locked or unlocked or something. Mr. Costello, that is a deliberate misconception, and I accentuate the positive. Why, any word of more than one syllable ruins your equilibrium. Costello, you don't even know what a syllable is, do you? Yes, sir. Do you know what a syllable is? Yes, sir. Well, tell us, what's a syllable? A syllable? I'll give you a chance to tell us. What's a syllable? A syllable? I'll speak right up and tell it, ladies and gentlemen. A syllable? Everybody knows what it is. Now, we want to know whether you know what it is or not. I know what it is. That's fine. Go ahead and speak up. A syllable? Take your time. Don't rush. A syllable? Don't hurry yourself now. A syllable. You do know what it is, of course. Well, let me say it! <laughs> a syllable. That's, that's it, one word at a time. I'm talking too much, ain't I? <laughs> now, go ahead. Tell the folks what's a syllable. a syllable. You don't mind if I get a word in here, do you? Look, go ahead. I'm kind of gabby, ain't I? <laughs> All right, now, what is a syllable? A syllable, a syllable is a sound, right? See what I mean? <laughs> yes. A sound formed by letters of the alphabet placed in juxtaposition one to the other. Now, how many letters in the alphabet? Do you know? There's about... Uh... No, there's not about. There's a definite number. <laughs> how many letters in the alphabet? Uh, 35, maybe? No, 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 no. 34? No. no, no, there are not 34. Now, for example, let's go right here. Now, uh, the letters of the alphabet placed in juxtaposition form what? They form syllables, right? Now, how many syllables in a one-syllable word? One. A two-syllable word? Two. A four-syllable word? Three. <laughs> No, no. A four is the middle syllable of four. What's the middle syllable in the four syllable word? The middle syllable? The middle syllable. What is it? That's uh, the middle syllable. The middle, uh -huh. There is no middle syllable. I'll put one there. <laughs> that's the trouble with you, Mr. Costello, you see? The trouble is your enunciation, your grammatical construction. When you put the past participle in a subjunctive mood, you inadvertently split your infinitive. Now, when you split the infinitive, what happens to your predicate? You pull the predicate down so the infinitive won't show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, my dear boy, in two words, exactly what's wrong with Lou Costello. Your reasoning capacity is infinitesimally inadequate. You're becoming more and more ridiculously insipid every moment in your inherent miscalculations. Together with that, you have a very irascible way of displaying before cultured ladies and gentlemen your inveterate propensities and your ridiculous idiosyncrasies. You cause chagrin and consternation, I may say, amongst your most ubiquitous friends, if you should happen to be possessed of a friend, which I doubt. Now, do you know what you are? Yes. What? I'm a period to a lousy conversation. <laughs> Freddie Rich with the wonderful arrangement of The Very Thoughts of You. Come in. Oh, I beg your pardon. Are you the Costello who Mr. Valley is working with tonight? Uh, yes, I'm Bud Abbott, and this is my partner, Luke Costello. All right, boys. Bring in the screen and place it in front of Abbott and Costello. Oh, wait a minute, lady. What's the idea of putting us behind a screen? It's made of antiseptic gauze. Mr. Valley doesn't want to be contaminated by you two bums. 
Who does that guy Valley think he is? He must think he's Artinas. Artinas? What is Artinas? Sinatra, spelled backwards. <laughs> Costello, you're jealous of Rudy because he's a great ladies' man. And by the way, I gotta talk to him about that too, Abbott. What do you mean? He's just stealing my women. Stealing your women? Yes. I don't mind him grabbing off those 18 year old girls. But when he starts fooling around with the dames over 65, he's cutting in on my territory. <laughs> Nonsense, Costello. And yours too. Look, Rudy Valley can't help it if, if women like him. He has such beautiful wavy hair. Why shouldn't he have wavy hair? He sleeps all night with his head in the Phoenician blind. <laughs> Uh, you want to answer the doll, Lou, or not? Yes, I Go ahead. All right, stand back. I think it must be Valley. Come in. Good evening, gentlemen. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Mr. Valley's personal business manager. I am Eustace P. Dink. Dink? Dink. Did you say Dink? Yes, Dink, Dink, Dink. Dink, 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 went the trolley. The crank, 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 went the trolley. Quiet, 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 Costello. Please. Uh, Costello, ask Mr. Dink if he'd like a drink. Okay. I'll fix Mr. Drink the Dink. I mean, a Dink the Drink. I mean, I'll get a drink for drink the dink. I'll bring him a sandwich. <laughs> Please, gentlemen, I just came over here to leave this pail of melted butter. Mr. Valley wants you to pour the butter on the strip. Pour melted butter on the strip? What's the idea? Mr. Valley likes plenty of butter on his corn. <laughs> <laughs> Hold me back, Abbott, before I give Mr. Dink a clunk on the conk with a crunch. All right. <laughs> Forget about that, Costello, and pour the drinks. Okay, Abbott, I'll take this salt glass. Uh, no, you don't. That drink stinks. What? I said that drink stinks. Must be the cheap gin you've been using. Never mind that. Go ahead. I'll oh, forget about me. the drinks and let's get down to business. I brought over Mr. Valley's head writer to put some jokes in the script. Uh, will you step in here, CB? I, I am so dandy. As a gag man, I am dandy. <laughs> Quiet. It's Kitzel. Yes, yes. Now, wait a minute, Kitzel. What's the matter? You don't write jokes for Valley. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I just wrote a joke this morning. Listen to this one. It's going to factor you. Uh, what's got four wheels and flies? All right, I'll ask you. What has four wheels and flies? A garbage wagon. <laughs> I'm killing myself. <laughs> Maybe we need a trouble. Now wait. <laughs> now wait a minute, Costello. Yeah. Kitzel may have some better jokes. You can't tell. But I know a better joke than he does. Listen, Kitzel. Yeah. What happened to the rat that crawled into the barrel of molasses? Mm. What happened to the rat who crawled into a barrel of molasses? Mm, that kicks me. Stuck the other rat, too. <laughs> <laughs> it stuck the other rat, too. <laughs> like it? No. Well, Ketzel, did you bring some jokes over for our script? Oh, yes, indeed. Now, here is one joke what Mr. Valley insists that you put in. What is the difference between an animal with long horns, a ten-carat diamond ring, and a jacket? No, oh, now, kids, well, please, everybody knows that joke. Well, all right, you're uh, so what, smart. What, what I mean, an animal with long horns is a reindeer. You right. And a, a ten-carat diamond is two deer. Uh -huh. That's right, Abbott, but what about the jacket? That's you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a rumor. I'm wearing a false tail. Uh, come in. Step aside. Step aside, everybody. Mr. Valley is about to enter the studio. Everybody, prepare yourself. You too, fat boy. What do you want me to do? Please remove your hat and shoes, kneel down, and face the east. Tell our guests. Will you two ushers please take your places in the aisles where you belong? <laughs> Abbott. Thank you, fellas. Everybody wants to save him. Let me get that guy now. I'll knock the rumor right out of his nose. Costello, that's no way to talk to Rudy Valley. He came over here to help us with our program. Yes. I was led to believe I was welcome, so I pranced right over here. Well, you can pick up your lantern and prance right out again. <laughs>
We know a lot of you like the sound of the words XGI. We can't think about it too much at present, but it sounds good. But being an XGI will mean other things, too. For example, it'll cost a bit of money. The Retail Menswear Association says the average XGI will have to spend some $300 just to get by during his first civilian year. There'll be furniture for your home. You'll probably want and need a new car. You may want to travel. Well, these and a dozen other items will be cropping up to hit you below the money belt. That's why it's wise to save now. Hang on to every dollar you can spare. Invest your extra cash in GI bonds or soldiers' deposits. The easy way to save is the regular monthly savings plan. See your first sergeant or company clerk and work out a savings plan to meet your rate of pay. Costello, I asked Rudy to come over here, and he's an old friend of mine. Indeed I am. How well I remember when Bud and I were barefoot boys in tan. We used to go camping together in the forest. Many is the time that we roasted ham over an open fire. I can smell the ham roasting now. <laughs> yes. You'd better step back from those hot footlights. <laughs> uh, look, Rudy. <laughs> Just how did you plan to build up our Thursday night audience? Well, between us, we've got to win over every member of every family. I know that all the men will listen to you, Bud, and naturally all the women and children will listen to me. If there are any cats or dogs listening, this is Lou Costello. <laughs> I don't feel that way, Costello. I've written a little play for you to do tonight in which you play the starring role. The play is called Jack and the Beanstalk. I'll be back in a few minutes with the play. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, Rudy, isn't that the play where the goose lays the golden egg? That's right. Get your baskets ready, folks. We'll be laying them in the aisles tonight. <laughs> Lovely Connie Haynes sings, Accentuate the Positive. Gather round me, everybody. Gather round me while I preach some. Feel a sermon coming on me. The topic will be sing, and that's what I'm again. If you want to hear my story, then settle back and just sit tight while I start reviewing the attitude of doing right. You gotta accent, you with the positive feeling. Money to negative, latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. in between. You've got to spread joy up to the maximum. Bring blue down to the minimum. Have faith, the pandemonium liable to walk upon the sea. To illustrate my last remark, Jonah and the way. No way in the heart. What did they do? Just when everything looked so dark. Man, they said with their accent, she went the positive feeling. Money the negative. Latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. in between. You've got to act. Sent you with the positive Eeling I need the negative Latch on To the affirmative Don't mess with Mr. in between No, don't mess with Mr. in between Ladies and gentlemen, we now present a stirring drama entitled Jack and the Beanstalk, starring Lou Costello in the title role, assisted by Rudy Valley and Bud Abbott. As Costello is the head man, he naturally gets the fat part. And let us listen to this fat head. <laughs> All right, Costello, take your place at the microphone while Rudy sets the scene. That's very sweet of you, Bud, to ask me to set the scene. 
I didn't come over here for that purpose. Costello is the star of the play, but of course, if you insist... Who's insisting? Thank you. Remember, Costello, I'm only here to help you. Now, let's get on with the story. Ladies and gentlemen, once upon a time, there lived a poor old lady and her son, Jack. That's me, folks. I'm the star. That's right. Jack and his mother had no food to eat in the house, so Jack's mother said to him, Jack, my son, we have nothing to eat and we have no money. Just, just a minute. Just a minute, Rudy. Are you going to play? Are you playing a part of my mother? Of course, Costello. Anything to help you out. Oh, for a minute, I thought you was butting into my play. Of course not. Okay. Now, the mother goes on to say, uh, Jack, my son, to take our car into the city and sell it. We need the money. So little Jack goes trudging down the road with the cow. Plump, 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 moo, moo, moo. Now, wait a minute. Are you doing a sound effects, too? Certainly. I'm here to help you. I'm putting you across. You're putting me across the barrels. <laughs> when do I talk? Be patient, Costello. You'll be on in a minute. Get me on while I'm still young. All right. <laughs> now, as Jack trudges down the road with the cow, he meets a funny old man who stops him and says, Good morning, Jack. How do you feel this fine morning? I feel... You're looking good, too. What have you got there on the end of that rope? It's a cow, eh? It's... Pretty good poor looking cow. Reminds me of a cow I used to have. Yes. He gave buttermilk. Of course. But... What else can a poor cow give but her milk? <laughs> what kind of a cow is it, son? Don't uh, tell me it's a Jersey cow. I can tell by her license plate. <laughs> I'm killing the people. Yeah, you're murdering me, too. <laughs> ah, but will you get the guy out of here? Costello, please don't interrupt me while I'm speaking. <laughs> this guy is more repulsive than my Uncle Artie Stebbins. Well, Costello, uh, Rudy, Rudy is only here to help you. Now, let's get back to the story. Okay. Now, um, my mother told me to take this cow... Please, Costello. The old man isn't through speaking. I'm sorry, I talk too much. Excuse me. I'm as bad as that secretary you sent over. Oh, that's all right. Now, son, let's get down to business. What do you aim to do with that cow? Tell us. Do what? Tell us, tell us. That's it, Costello. Get your lines out. I want you to be heard. Sell it! Sell it! Sell it! Costello, Costello! Sell it! Costello! You said that sell line it! once. Costello, you said that line once. I know I did. I like the line. I may not get another one. I want to sell it! Costello, Costello, please. Costello, please. You're stopping the play. Uh, uh, go on, Rudy. All right, son. You said you all want to sell that cow. I'll give you five magic beans for the cow. Five beans? My mother will kill me if I only bring home five beans. Just a moment. Who's playing the part of your mother? You are. Well, if I'm your mother, am I going to kill you? No. I'm only here to help you. I'm your friend. I'd like to have you for a dead cousin. <laughs> Well, anyway, Jack takes the five magic beans and trudges back to his house. Clump, clump, clump. And the cow goes away with the old man. Moo, moo, moo. The cow's got more lines than me. Costello, please. Can you be quiet? Go ahead. Put something in here, my Be quiet. When, Jack, when Jack's mother discovers that he has sold the cow for five beans, she throws the beans out the window, not realizing their magic power, and then sends Jack to bed without his supper. The little fellow climbs into bed. Wait a minute. Before I climb into bed, I've got to take off my shoes. One, two, three. Costello. Costello, do you wear three shoes? Yeah, since my last line, I grew another foot. <laughs> now, Abbott, all these people out here, they come to see me. When do I start to do some acting? Right now, Costello. You wake up in the morning and look out the window. That's a nice piece of business. <laughs> the magic beans your mother threw out the window have grown into a huge beanstalk that reaches up into the sky. Now, Costello, this is your big moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Costello will now climb the beanstalk. Oh, boy. At last, I'm going to act. Here I go. Well, Costello, you don't have to read so loud. <sighs> yes, I do. I want the audience to know I'm here. Watch me climb. <sighs> Costello, Costello, don't <sighs> overplay it. Don't pant so loud. Look, Valley, you've stolen everything else. I ain't going to lose my pants. <laughs> <sighs> all right, all right. That's enough climbing, Costello. I'll give you the rest of the story very quickly. At the top of the beanstalk, you meet a big giant. I bet that's you. How did you get? I'm quick at those things. <laughs> ILP five full thumb. And chase after you. You eat the ground, cut down the beanstalk, and I crash to the ground and lay there dying. That's the best thing that happened all night. <laughs> now all of the rest of the lines are mine. But I don't die instantly. You wouldn't. <laughs> You're a stubborn type. Now, Costello, would you deprive Rudy of a few dying words? Oh, no, no, I couldn't do that. Go ahead, Rudy. Give us your last words. Very well. A little sad music, please, Freddy. <laughs> My time is your time. Wait a minute, will you? Will you wait a minute? Hold on, Rudy! Stop him! Wait a minute. Well, what's the matter, Costello? You were right, Abbott. It sounds like the room with the false tail is holding Valley's nose. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Tonight, Connie Haynes sings a beautiful ballad for I'm Making Believe. I'm making believe that you're in my arms. Oh, I know you're so far away. Making believe I'm talking to you. Wish you could hear what I say. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.